All right, what's going on guys? Here we are back again. So today I'm finishing up $340. So a nice solid day. I really can't complain. Uh, made back most of my drawdown, most of the loss that I had last Tuesday. Maybe about 100 bucks left in my drawdown. So 100 bucks left back until I'm back to the highs. And um, so today I made most of the profit on ILAG, HLBZ. I have a couple uh, live trades that I'll, that I'll review or like videoed uh, trades that I'll review here uh, on ILAG, which would be my biggest winner. And then um, BBBY, which would be my biggest loser. And I'll give you a little sneak peek on BBBY. Um, so BBBY was like the first stock that, you know, I started to trade um, more dialed in because pre-market there wasn't really much. There was BSN, what is it, BNSO or whatever, BNSO, I think. Uh, there was that stock, but I, I, did, I completely missed it. And it was only like a short-lived move. So I didn't really trade pre-market. But at the open of BBBY, I started to get dialed in and get dialed in. But I was only trading small size because um, I, I didn't really know what to expect for BBBY. It just like started ripping up. And I just, my first ad was like literally for that break of the pre-market high. Uh, and then I just started opening up real nicely. And then I started to size in on these dips uh, and, and pretty much riding the front side. But it was only on 100 to 200 shares in a, in a position. And once I started to feel like I was dialed in, this was when, you know, the stock was already going on the backside. But, you know, I didn't really know it at the time. But still, as long as it's over the $12 mark, the previous high, you know, it's still on the five minutes, still technically on a front side. And so I was still dialed in on it. And I was really going over for this dip here at $12, $12 for the uh, VWAP support and the support of a pre-market high. I thought we'd see a bounce here. Um, I thought we'd see a decent bounce, at least you know a couple percent or something, but uh, completely fell through. And that was the time that I sized up. I was sized up maybe two or three times that I was trading on the front side. So what ended up happening was I risked my 100, and I was up like 170, 190, on the day on that front side on BBBY. And so what really happens was I risked that profit that I made, um, 170 and for this trade, because I think that I'm ready to, to size up and I, I'm ready to push the envelope. And this was the moment that I felt like I was ready to push the envelope. It sucks that it didn't work out, but yeah, I ended up giving back that profit that I worked on uh, getting uh, right at the open on BBBY. Um, you know, hindsight, I definitely should have went with that size, you know, the 500 shares. So I was trading 500 shares when I sized up. I should have been trading that on the front side, but I didn't really know how strong BBBY would be because it was the first stock I was trading on the day. It was kind of just ripping up. Um, out of nowhere, just started to rip up. So I don't know. I mean, that could be an excuse, I guess. I guess I could have really got in on the first dip, kind of aggressive. Uh, down in here with bigger share size or even down here for the second dip or even you know I could have got a break of 1250 in here or break of this high so there were definitely opportunities um, yeah I don't I just took a little bit too long to realize that uh, I was in the zone on this stock and that you know, I really could have sized up because I was nailing 20 30 cent trades over and over again and um, which I will show you in a live video. I've actually have some videos recorded of my biggest loss, and my biggest win. So let's, uh, we'll go over that. Uh, and then on ILAG was, I was trading this front side and then it kind of started grinding up and I was kind of sleeping on it. I was just like, I was wait, always waiting for a bigger pullback, a cleaner picture. And uh, it just kind of just kept grinding up. And I knew there was definitely opportunity and people were killing it on ILAG. Uh, just buying these dips, selling the pop, buying the dips, selling the pop, not even waiting for like a huge move, just taking that 10 cents, taking that 15 cents, and then get waiting for that next dip. And you could have made a killing on ILAG, uh, which I didn't start trading aggressively until this halt up, in which I'll show you my trade uh, in a second, uh, which would be, that would be my biggest winner on the day. And so, yeah, that puts me up $340 on the day. So we'll 
start with ILAG. So ILAG here, um, so we're up into a halt at uh, 678, and maybe up about like 150 or so on the day. Uh, I was trading HLBZ, I was making some profits back on HLBZ. And so we'll fast forward this to the unhalt. So I jumped over to OST, but didn't really trade. I was kind of just monitoring it. And then I let's see when it resumes here. So, okay, let's, let's go back here. So it's right about to resume. So we have volume increasing here on a front side move, kind of going parabolic now. Halt up and it opens 20 cents higher and then tops out at $7, a psychological resistance point. And so with all that volume coming up, um, my trade was the breakthrough $7. It wasn't for holding for a, a huge move. I was just looking for that scalp through that psychological level. And with that halt up, I knew that there was buyers on this. And I knew that, you know, resuming higher is a bullish signal. And so I took that and I was looking for the breakthrough $7. I took my starter here in the 90s, anticipating the breakthrough 7. Once it got bought up to 7, I immediately just flattened my position because we're very, very extended here on the 5 minute. And uh, there was definitely going to be some sort of pullback uh, coming, at least, you know, uh, in probabilistic um, theory, I guess, like statistically. Yeah, I mean, very extended on the five minute. Uh, likely that you'll get a pullback. But, you know, last week we would have stocks rip up into a halt, unhalt, and then rip up another 50 cents into a halt on an extended five minute setup. So, you know, it really depends what kind of market you're in, but you can kind of tell that the market today kind of slowed off a little bit. So definitely um, wanted to be more um, conservative in this area because um, we haven't really seen anything go too parabolic yet today. <coughs> so <coughs> I took my profit there, and so I got in at 92 and sold at 17. So that's about 25 cents there. So that's pretty solid, 25 cent winner. Um, Roughly about 4%, 3 or 4% uh, trade, and that would be my biggest winner. And then from there, we kind of just went backside. I did try going in for a dip here off the 9 EMA. Did get a little bit off of it, but there was just so much selling pressure that it's very, it was very, very sketchy. All those green candles just kind of kept flipping red, and uh, so I kind of stayed away from it after it broke down below the 9 EMA. Um, so that was ILAG. We'll go back to now. We'll go to the other one here was what was it again? BBBY. That's right. Okay, so BBBY. So this is BNSO. I actually, I'll actually show you this trade here. I actually got a really nice fill on BNSO. So we have support here around 1050. So right here at 1050, it's a leading gapper on the day. Look, it's up 128% going into the open. Uh, and this is the one that kind of gave some good momentum here pre-market. However, it's very short-lived. Um, I didn't, I was actually not up for this move. I woke up kind of late. Uh, but I was up for this move, but I kind of left it alone. Um, so we got a nice dip here down to 10.50. I just hit the bid, joined the bid. And looking for support at 1050, just looking for a pop. I'm not even looking for a complete red to green. I'm just looking for a couple cents. 10 cents, 20 cents is great. So I get in here, I'm trying to get filled at 1050. Uh, I get filled at 1056. So close enough, 160 shares. So that's about $1,600 position size. That's not too big. I take some off immediately at 1070. So only about 14 cents. But then 
a split second later, it's up 40 more cents. And I, you know, if I should have held 100 shares, I could have had another 50 bucks in my pocket. But uh, I'm still holding that 60 shares left. And this is what I did here. I was in, looking for this red to green now breakthrough VWAP. And I was kind of disappointed I sold that 100 shares a little bit too soon. But so what I did was I added back 100 shares. As I saw, buyers buying this up. So you could see on the tape here, buyers are coming in. Buyers on the tape, buyers on the tape. Boom, breakthrough VWAP. Nice pop, taking it off for a nice, that was a nice 50 cent winner. So here, here we go. Wait, let me see what when I got filled here. So he got filled at, boom, 39 or 36. Oh, it looks like my order got at 1050, even though I could have got it filled at 1040, 1146, sorry, 1150. And then we popped up to 1170. That's when I cut, that's when I took it off. So nice, another 20 cents on top of that 60 shares I was still holding from 1060. So a dollar a share on a portion of that, and then 40 cents or what, 20 cents on, on that second add to my position for that breakthrough VWAP, red to green. And in a hot market, yeah, you should definitely hold a portion of that for a potential retest of the high. But um, I, I'm very, I've been very conservative right now because you've just been seeing a lot of pops and drops. Anytime there's a big move, um, it's usually followed by a big, either a big dip or a flush. You know, if it's a dip, you know, it can still have that continuation. But a lot of times uh, you just want to take your profit and then look for that next entry. And that's what I kind of did. Uh, which then, you know, here I jumped over to BBBY, which I started getting in here for the break through the high, going in for that dip, first dip, which is a good setup. However, it was underneath that $12 level, but it was a large cap. So you definitely need to be a little bit more patient or I think a mid cap. So you got to be a little bit more patient for the larger float stocks. Uh, so that's why I was definitely willing to sell and get back in. Uh, if I was if I felt like I was in too high on a dip, I was okay with doing that. So we did get a nice run up, and here was a nice dip, very patient, waiting for that candle to get bought up. I could have made a starter down a little bit earlier, but uh, did get that dip there, and then I started going backside. But look at this here; he had a huge panic down through the 90 MA. And I, I was like, this is this is overextended here. Uh, the volume isn't even that high. You can see on the volume bar, it's still kind of relatively light. So, you know, when you see this kind of flush um, on low volume like this, a lot of the times there's a really good panic dip buy. Uh, but if you see a flush like this and the volume is like high of day volume, uh, that's something, you know, I want to be extra, extra patient, maybe pause off. For a while and see what kind of uh what unfolds because sometimes that means that all the buyers are gone they already just they already canceled their orders or they're they sold their position and they're not looking to get back in here you know buyers are looking potentially looking for a dip off 12 and 12 is a major support area on bbby from pre-market and as well as from the opening range breakout so 12 dollars put in my starter there at 11.13, adding another portion here at 12.12, 12, and then we instantly get a 20, 30 cent pop, 30 cent pop for my entry. So that's a rough, that's a really good profit on the day. And that's one of those trades, you know, I wish I would have got in with that 500 share increment. And so I'd be in a thousand shares versus the hundred share increments. But uh, I didn't really start to realize that I was in the zone until these trade these dip buys started coming in and then that's when i eventually here i use another dip buy down here for another quick another quick exit for 20 cents another dip buy there for a couple cents and now you know it's, it's coming down is dipping down three or four times i even have this written down in my notes i even have this written down in my notes here literally says be careful buying the third or fourth dip down to support. The reason I have that written down is because there's a lot of times where I'm, you know, I do really well on dip buys, but 
there's there's only enough dips, there's only enough bounces that that support can hold. And so once it comes down a third time, a fourth time, that can get really, really risky. And that's what exactly happened here. Um, I completely forgot about that rule. You know, I should have definitely been more careful. Uh, but this was when I was like, all right, you know, I'm feeling good. You know, I'm up like 200 bucks on the day. You know, I could be up more, so I'm ready to size up. But I'm in the zone. And so I take my starter here at 12.46, and I'm looking for a pop back over the 9 EMA and support off $12 and the VWAP area. And so I'm, I'm kind of getting in, getting out, waiting for those buyers to come in. Um, so I'm in 300 shares. This is my first problem here is not being in 300 shares before, you know, before the, the bounce, you know, before any sign that buyers are coming in. So ideally, I want to be in that starter max. So 100 shares max. And if maybe not even at all, I shouldn't even be in yet. I wouldn't be in until maybe here where you see that bottoming tail wick coming off, uh, holding that $12 in that VWAP level. Maybe that's when I should be adding to my position or starting a position, not holding from here, because you never know if this candle is just going to dip down and just not reclaim at all. And you'd be down 30, 40 cents. So I always want to, you know, hindsight, you know, I should have waited for the buyers to come in before I started buying. But, you know, it looked really good here. And then out of nowhere, you just the block of sellers just, you know, keep pushing this down. And I was in 500 chairs. This is in a pretty big position size for me. Um, so that would be, what, $6,000 position size. And But the, the good thing that I did do was I cut it immediately as I realized it was going against me, uh, immediately as the thesis did not work. Uh, so it did sell off a little bit too much for my like. It wasn't holding $12. And there's just too many sellers. And so I, I cut it for maybe like a 20 cent loss or so. So it wasn't really too bad. You know, if I held a little bit longer, maybe a couple weeks ago when I didn't really manage my risk as well as I am right now, because of I'm realizing how big these dips can be uh, lately. Um, so cutting my loss, you know, was very helpful because I could have been down another 50 cents here. And that would have been, that would have been, I would have never had any chance to get green today. Um, so at this point I was a little bit flustered. However, I knew that it was a really good setup. It was, I, I would totally take that trade again. Uh, on the five minute, it looked good. It, the volume wasn't really high, uh, coming in on the dip. Um, I think it was just the fact that it was a little bit bigger float than I'm used to trading. So the dips can be a little bit more exaggerated, um, on these types of floats. So Maybe I should have been a little bit extra, extra, extra patient on that five-minute dip. But uh, I did really, really good on this front side move. And so that's something I have to be a little bit more in tune with when that's going on, when it's unfolding. And I really, you know, if I can realize that I'm in the zone faster, then I can size up and push my share size a little bit faster and earlier in the day than when after, you know, the move is already finished. And then I'm like, all right, I wish I would have sized up in that, but let's go in here on this next uh, setup here and hopefully it works out. And then, you know, you never really, you know, sometimes it doesn't work out and then you pretty much just give back all of those, all that gains that you made on those good setups that were earlier in the day. And that's just like really, really tough feeling uh, to handle. But that's kind of what happened. But uh, I did bounce back. I was down, I was up maybe only here. I am at PL. I was up $38 on the day. That was it. And I rallied back to 340 profit in the day through HLBZ. Traded HLBZ through the high here. And just kind of going for those breakouts and then those pullbacks after that fresh breakout. And that's where I made my money here on HLBZ. And then ILAG as well. ILAG was the one uh, for me here, breaking through the highs and then kind of just scalping this front side. And then as soon as it went into that halt, I was looking for that halt resumption entry. And I saw, as soon as I saw it resume under $7, I was looking for that quick scalp through that psychological level. And uh, I was not afraid to get aggressive on that one. So uh, I did pay off $340. And so now it's just about um, um, anticipating what's going to happen you know, tomorrow. I mean, you might get some good moves tomorrow. Uh, today wasn't terrible. 
so without that BBBY loss, and you know, maybe if I would have sized up earlier, and today could have had that potential to be close to $1,000 on the day in profit. Uh, if I was using 500 shares on BBBY in that front side. And so tomorrow, I know it's coming soon. I don't, I don't know when it's going to happen, but that 1000, 1K day is coming soon. I can feel it. It's like so close. It's so close. I just have to reach out and grab it. And that's what I've been trying to do is just push the envelope and just reach out a little bit beyond my comfort zone, accept the risk, and grab it. So I just have to be fearless. I have to be fearless, but I have to manage my risk as well. And so I did I did do both of those today, and I still think came out on top with a solid profit. So and I just want to review here my metrics on the day. So today we can see that uh, maybe about $120 left to make back until I'm back at all-time highs. Uh, but today my stats were a little bit negative risk-reward. However, my accuracy was on point today, uh, almost 70% accuracy and so that gives me a nice profit factor uh, and that's how it was that's I guess the accuracy was was what got me nicely green today uh, and that my average position MFE versus MAE is really good so um, which is a good sign that I'm not holding on to my losers too long um, I think my average winner Maybe a little bit smaller because I'm taking my profits a little bit too quick rather than letting my losers too long because uh, my MAE is smaller than my F MFE. And so the MAE is my interim negative profit uh, during the trade. So my maximum average is 553 and then my maximum profit interim during the trade is $8. So it shows me here that um, I'm letting that profits, you know, be a little bit bigger, you know, and when I'm in the trade than my average loser. However, I think that average uh, winning trade, I'm cutting it a little bit too short. Um, if it was a little bit bigger, uh, it could be more one to one. If I did leave them run a little bit, a little bit longer, but um, then again, you know, my accuracy does make up for it, and that's kind of like my my trading strategy. So that's what's been keeping me green is just having high accuracy. And take my profits quick, not uh, not really uh, exposing my myself to the market for too long, uh, like for ten or twenty minutes or thirty minutes. Uh, usually, I like to keep it in within a few minutes for a trade. Um, so that's just kind of been my style, and that's how I've kind of adapted to being a profitable trader. But everybody's different, so you know if you have different stats than I do, if you have. Uh, lower accuracy, but a higher risk reward. That's also really, really good. Um, it's kind of just, uh, yeah, it's just how you, it, I think it has to do with like your psychological um, habits as well as like, um, yeah, who you're kind of like as a person. Are you somebody who likes to be quick, quick, quick and like needs action? Or are you somebody who likes to sit back and analyze and take your time and maybe set a position and, and watch it and observe it for 30 minutes for an hour? Uh, so there's different ways to, obviously, to trade. So this is the way that I've been doing and kind of adapting and doing real well. And so, um, yeah, it, anyways, I'm going to I'm gonna finish here. Um, definitely comment down below how your trading strategy is. Are you somebody who is a quick scalper like I am? Or are you somebody who likes to be a little bit more patient and start a position and hold on to it? Um, for many, many minutes or maybe an hour, hours or two hours? Uh, definitely comment down below. Also, hit that like button and consider subscribing if you're not yet a subscriber. And uh, I'll see you guys then tomorrow for the next day trading recap. All right. I'll see you guys later. Peace.